welcome to my channel, A Wealth of Good Health. Today, I am going to talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. Before we start to dive into the subject matter, please subscribe to watch more videos in English, French, or Creole. Every Sunday evening, new video will be uploaded. Please check them out. If you, a family member or friends struggling with this condition, go to my email and ask Murray. A couple questions will be selected and discussed in the Ask Murray session. Ask away. How do we differentiate stress from PTSD? Well, when afraid during and after a traumatic situation, the fight or flight response is usually activated to protect us from harm. Basically, everybody will experience a range of reaction after a traumatic event. Most people will recover from primary symptoms. However, those who continue to experience problems following this traumatic event may be diagnosed with PTSD. So, what is PTSD? PTSD is a disorder that develops in some people who have experienced traumatic or shocking events. Not everyone with PTSD has been through a dangerous event. Some experiences like the sudden unexpected death of a loved one. People who have PTSD may feel stressed or frightened even when there's no danger. Some people recover within six months, others take time, and some people, the condition becomes chronic. How can we diagnose PTSD? Well, in order to diagnose with PTSD, there has to be exposure to a trauma. Keep in mind that exposure to a trauma doesn't mean you have to only physically expose to that trauma. According to the updated DSM-5 new edition, you don't have to physically expose to a trauma. You could also um, be at work taking care of someone who's been experiencing something like traumatic, like 9-11, for instance, or um, earthquake, for instance, and you can also develop that PTSD from just treating them. Symptoms must appear within three months of the traumatic incident, and symptom also duration must be one month or more and also symptoms have to be severe enough to interfere with relationships work to be considered PTSD. The individual must experience all the following symptoms for at least one month. What are the following symptoms? Well we are going to use the acronym C-I-A-A, -A. C -I -A -A, okay? That's the acronym that we are going to use to memorize the different symptoms that one must have in order to consider with um, PTSD. C, stand for cognition and mood. They have to have impairment in social also occupational functioning okay so i for intrusion or re-experiencing symptoms so they have to re-experience the event through bad dreams flashbacks and frightening thoughts now a for avoidance what exactly is avoidance it's avoiding thoughts or feelings 
related to the traumatic events. These symptoms may cause a person to change his or her personal routine. For instance, someone has been in a bad car accident. Because of that, this person may avoid driving for a long period of time, for an extended time. So, the last A stands for arousal. What is that? The symptom has to be constant and it can make the person feel stressed and angry. For example, difficulty falling asleep, difficulty concentrating, and feel constantly irritable. Well, the key treatment for people with PTSD include medication, psychotherapy, or both. Medication can be antidepressant. Antidepressant may help control PTSD symptoms such as sadness, worry, anger, and feeling numb inside. So, psychotherapy. Psychotherapy, there are several types of psychotherapy that are very much helpful. For instance, Cognitive Behavior Therapy or CBT. So, with CBT comes Exposure Therapy or Cognitive Restructuring Therapy. Exposure Therapy is uh, the type of therapy that will help the person to face and control their fear. Cognitive Restructuring Therapy also help the person make sense of the bad memories and sometimes people remember the event differently than how it happened. There are some short-term goals that uh, therapists or clinicians can help the client with uh, dealing or coping with the different symptoms. For instance, identifying cues that trigger the flashbacks. That will help the person to be in control of his or her disorder. The second one could be master basic relaxation skills. That will help the client to sleep and also manage their stress, which is associated with the trauma. Begin to process the trauma with your patient and also improve the sleep pattern, they're very helpful. Well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe it. Please comment down below if you have any question or feedback. And if you know someone who's going through this, don't forget to refer them to this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.